Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Last week, if you'll remember, I made all of the end grain mortises and all the rails. So I'm gonna pick up this week with making the mating mortises and all the posts and press on. I need to make the mortises and all four posts next. And when I make the mortises for the sides, I need to make those mortises so that the face of the side will meet flush with the face of the post. Because I didn't change the height of the bit after I made all the end grain mortises and all the rails, when I go to line up the rails with the post, the mortises, when the mortises line up, the side of the rail should be automatically flush with the side of the post. And that's exactly what I want. I need to change the height of the bit for the mortises that connect the two side components together. And, and to make this a little easier, I switched to a smaller diameter bit so it's easier to line up the mortiser with the mark on the post. I'm gonna create a subtle taper on the top of each post on all four sides. And to pull that off, I'm gonna use my micro jig tapering jig. For the top and bottom front rail, I'm gonna make a cloud lift detail on each side. And I'm gonna use an old template from a green and green piece that I made a while back. And I'm using this design feature not because I want this piece to be a green and green piece, but just because I like the, I like the way this design looks. After cutting close to the line of the bandsaw, I attached the template with some double stick tape. Now at the router table using a flush trim bit, I'll take it all the way down to the pattern. Now I just need to switch the pattern to the other side and repeat the process. All I have left to do now before I can do some assembly is sand all the pieces and do a little bit of pre-finishing. I'm trying a new sandpaper out by Diablo. It's supposed to last 10 times longer than regular sandpaper, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. It's called SandNet, and it's sold by Diablo Tools, and it comes in a variety of grits.
I have the bookcase out of the clamps, and the next thing I want to start doing is shaping the tops of all the posts by rounding over all the edges. I want to round over all the edges on the sides and also the edges on the top, and I'm going to do that by hand. I still need to do a bunch of sanding and I still need to make all of the shelves for the bookcase. And for the shelves, I'm gonna use three quarter inch thick plywood and I'm gonna edge band both the front and back of each shelf with hard maple. And then I'll put a coat of finish on this bad boy and call it a bookcase. So I'm gonna save all that for next week. So I hope you guys will come back next time for the final segment of my bookcase build. And if you'd like to show some love to Garage Woodworks and what I do here, you can join my Patreon community and support what I do. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I also would hope that you would consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.